Hi and welcome back to Music and Gear. We've got an unboxing today and this unboxing is from what I've been hearing in the comments. Guitars that everyone wants to see and this particular guitar has come up many times and it's a hard one to get a hold of. It's one of those specialty guitars that Firefly makes and they only bring it out occasionally and when it comes up it disappears pretty quick. So let's open up the box and see which Firefly I'm actually talking about. And let me just say, it was in that box very, very well. <laughs> That's a tight fitting box. And here we have our goodie bag. And in the goodie bag, we have one Allen wrench and of course the Radio Shack cord. The box itself, the guitar is very snug in that box. That's probably the best fit that I've seen from them. Now here's my favorite part. You guys got to see it first. I'm really at a loss of words. That is one awesome looking freaking guitar. The neck it almost has a, an orange color to it. And the double binding. That is, that is sharp. Well, you know the story. Like we do every guitar on the channel, we're going to tear this guitar apart. We're going to go over the general fit and finish on the guitar. We're going to check the neck. We're going to check the frets. We're going to check the tuning. How well was it set from the factory on the intonation? The first fretted note. How did the frets feel? What's it sound like? And of course, we're going to open up the electronics cavity and see how well everything was soldered together. All right, I have the guitar up on our stool here. We're going to go over the general fit and finish of the guitar. And I guess the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over the body on the guitar. The body on the guitar is set up very traditionally as far as the cuts on the body. It's what I would call a slab body. It does not have an arm carve. It does not have a belly carve. It is a very traditional tele cut. Around the corner here of our veneer top, 
they have a binding and it goes all the way around the guitar. Now I'm looking at the binding and the way it connects to the veneer and this is extremely impressive for this price point guitar. It is it is very even. Now the edge is broken. It does have a very little round over. I'm going to say a sixteenth of an inch. It's not much. All they've done is broken the edge. But it has done very well. As far as glue, where the veneer hits the binding, it, again, it's good. I'm looking around right here, looking for any glue traces. There are a couple little teeny weeny spots right through here. It is minimal and it is extremely small. It is a very crisp binding to veneer. It has done extremely well. Going through the center of the guitar, we have a stripe. And that's where the book match veneer, where it goes together, they've routed another groove through it and they've inlaid another piece of wood. I don't see any glue residue at all on that. And it continues to go through the center of the guitar, but the pick guard is hiding it. But the areas where I can see it, it's done extremely well. The next thing, as I was putting the guitar up on the stool and the light hit this guitar, one, the finish and the polishing is done very well. But it's not just that. I'm hoping the camera will catch it. The figuring in this top is incredible. It morphs back and forth on the grain of the wood as the light hits it. That can be two things. This veneer is a little thicker than what they normally do, or it is a thin veneer and they just nailed the amount of glue that it took to hold the veneer to the core of the body. What ends up happening with a really thin veneer when it's glued on, that glue penetrates into the fibers of the wood. On a thin veneer, it'll go through the veneer and it'll prevent the stain and the color from penetrating right. It also eliminates the figuring that you get as you move the guitar back and forth in the light. This guitar does not have that problem. The flame maple top moves as the light hits it. It's, uh, I I'm still shocked at how well the top on this guitar moves on the flame maple top. And at this price point, that, that, is, that is crazy. On the back of the guitar, this is even crazier. The veneer morphs even more. It truly shifts as the light hits it. I do woodworking. This spot here and these spots in here. I'm not going to say it's a finishing error. Sometimes on these flame tops when you sand them certain areas of the wood will take the stain just a little differently. This particular slab on this side has done it very consistently. It's peeled apart like that. If this side does it, you hope this side does the same. In this case, it's done it here and here and right through here isn't quite the same. 
It's no fault of Firefly. It's just the piece of wood. When you get a piece that does it all the way across, that's what you call a 4A slab, a 3A slab. And the lower that number, the more difference there is between the two pieces. I'm not going to call this a 4A, but it is definitely a 2A, possibly a 3A, the way it figures. It is shockingly good. We also have another binding on the bottom part of the guitar. And I am going to look and see if I see any glue marks. It is the back of the guitar, so more errors are more prone to go through. Oh, that's okay. It's the back of the guitar. So let's see what we got. And right here, I do see a couple little spots. Again, I'm being super picky. There are a couple glue spots. And it is crisp. Here we have just a few. And right here, there's a couple. And I don't think the camera would even pick it up. It's really that small. It is very small. But what I'm looking for is a crisp line between the veneer and here. It is very crisp. But there are a couple little spots here and there. It has done incredibly well. Again, we have another piece of wood stripe right through the center of the guitar. And I'm going to look for glue marks through here. And I'm just not seeing anything that jumps out at me. It's, it's done very well. Here we have some furls. <clears throat> and the furls are inset into the guitar. This particular guitar I only feel one that's just a fraction higher than the others and that one's this one right here. Again, I'm being super critical. The finish is done so well, I'm being that critical. Yeah. They're, they're actually very good. There is a slight difference in this one. It, it's, it's less than half a millimeter difference between them all. It's done very well. Our back plate here, feeling the screws. Not feeling anything sharp. And this one does have the nylon plastic base plate that goes on and then the chrome plate and then the screws. So it gives it a nice black edge all the way around. Our heel joint here has the exact same broken edge all the way around the guitar. It's about a sixteenth of an inch. It does not change right here. There is no extra chamfer. There is nothing. It's a very traditionally cut Telecaster body. That sixteenth of an inch round over goes all the way around the guitar. Our jack plate right here is setting on the body perfectly. There are no gaps or cracks anywhere it is setting it's it's nicely done now looking at this edge between the two bindings this edge right here i'm looking at this and i can't quite decipher 
whether or not that's a bound edge or if that's the actual grain of the core of the guitar. It's very hard to tell. It's done that well. I am going to say it's the core of the guitar only because of this right here. I do see some glue lines in the body. Counting those, I see one, two, three, four. So if that's showing the true nature of the core of the guitar, it's four separate pieces. I'm going to look at this edge here and see if I can see those pieces. I do see the glue seam here, but this one, that one's hard to detect. It's right here, so that means it would be in this shoulder. Yes, I do see it. So this isn't a bound edge. I was thinking maybe they had bound that with another piece of veneer. That is the core of the guitar. And feeling it, it is done very well. It's, it's smooth. I'm not feeling any weird router transitions or humps or bumps. It's done well. Our button right here is setting true and square to the body. It is also tight. And our button here is in line with our center stripe. Our neck joint, looking at the gap between the neck and the seat of the guitar body, I don't see a gap. I don't see an angle where the gap changes front to rear. Sometimes you'll see a gap where it'll be tight here and there'll be a little gap here. That's usually a sign of a shim. This one looks like it's tight all the way across. So if there is a shim in there, it's very small. Our route here where it goes into the body, this is 90 degrees and they did not increase this round over. It is whatever this round over is here in the transition. So they haven't done any extra easing there. The neck to the body, the neck does stick out past the heel joint in the body just a little bit. I'm gonna say a millimeter. On this side, the neck is fitting tight to the body. And again, our round over here going to the seat is nicely done. On the top of the guitar, we have a pick guard, and it's like a leopard. It is setting tight and flat to the guitar. I don't see any screws that are set askew on the pick guard. Everything looks like it's nice and tight. Now this is kind of weird. This is kind of a sex same material as the pick guard and it goes around this bridge and the bottom pickup. And the bridge is setting in that route for this piece very well. The, the routing done on this particular piece matches the bridge plate very well. We also have five screws holding the bridge plate directly to the body. That's nice to see. The top of the saddles feel very smooth. All the screws in the saddles are setting either flush to the top of the saddle or below the top of the saddle. So there's nothing sharp there whatsoever. This is an extremely smooth feeling bridge. 
They've rounded over the back of the bridge right here and broken the edge so there's nothing to catch your wrist on. It's very smooth. The screws on the back. I do feel a couple little spots on the screws in the back. They're not polished smooth, but there's nothing sticking out cutting my finger. But uh, they're not super smooth. They're not glass smooth. I do, I do feel the ends of the screws. Our pickups setting in the guitar. They are setting square and true to the body. The routing on this pick guard following the body, it follows the body very well. There is a slight offset change right here, but I'm going to say it's it's within a 32nd to a 16th of an inch, maybe 364. So it's following the body rather well. Our route here for our chrome plate, it is following the chrome plate, and I'm not feeling anything sharp on the plate. And all the screws look like they're down and tight. So they're not setting a skewed in the plate. Our volume knob. Volume knob is smooth. It is not friction free. But it's not tight either. It moves Fairly easy, just rolling my pinky back and forth on it. So if you're a pinky player, you shouldn't have too much trouble rolling the volume on this guitar. Our tone, the tone feels the same. It's nice, it's smooth. I don't feel it rubbing the chrome plate. So that feels nice as well. The chrome finish is very nice. Sometimes you'll you'll see some scratches. The chrome plating on this looks very nice. Now let's go up and take a look at our neck. The neck on this guitar is done in a high gloss. It is very smooth. But not only is the back of the neck done in hog gloss, but the fretboard itself right here is also done in a high gloss. It is all done in high gloss. The headstock, it is just butter smooth. And a lot of that's the finish, the high gloss finish and the buffing that they've done on this, it's, uh, it's very smooth. We do have standard tuners. We have two string trees. But look at the truss rod hole. That is something you just don't see at this price point. It's two separate pieces they've drilled a hole then they've inset a piece of wood and then drilled through that to give it that little accent piece that's nice there's also a really pretty grain in the headstock the back of the neck also has a very nice grain and the skunk stripe, it's nice. Now we're going to look at the skunk stripe on the neck. I'm going to see if I see any glue residue. And 
and I do not. It is nicely done. We have placement dots across the top right here. And we have the black placement dots on top of the fretboard. This is a two piece maple neck. So it's not a solid slab of maple. Even though you have the skunk stripe, there is a seam right here. It's done well, but there is a seam. So it is a maple cap. And you can only see it in a couple spots. Right here you can see it. So it is not one slab of maple and they've routed the back end to set the truss rod. So they could have very easily put the truss rod in the top and not had a skunk stripe. But you got to have a skunk stripe. It's a Telecaster. Now whether or not the skunk stripe is there for looks or they set the truss rod in the skunk stripe and then still applied a maple cap to the top, we don't really know. But it does have a applied maple fingerboard to the maple neck. Next are our frets, and the frets feel smooth. Firefly has got the ball end fret thing figured out. They've, they've got the end of the frets figured out. There are no sharp fret ends. The frets themselves, I'm looking for tooling marks where the frets were leveled. And this one isn't the best one that I've seen from Firefly. I do still see a couple scratches going this way on the top of this fret here. And I see some on this fret and some on that fret. They're all pretty consistent. I would say from here up, I see a little bit more scratching than down here. I do see the line in the center where they were leveled. So it looks like they were sanded, but I don't think these frets were polished. Maybe a steel wool pass, but I don't think they were actually polished. The fret feel. It's okay. It's not super smooth. But I don't think it would take long to break the frets in from playing. And of course, if you wanted to speed that process up, when you went to put strings on it, you could very easily give this two passes, polishing the frets, and it would give it that broken feel. But you can feel the leveling pass on the frets. I felt a lot worse. But I, I think Firefly missed a little bit on these. They really should have had a little bit more work done to the top of the frets. But they're not horrible. I've seen frets like this on seven, eight hundred dollar guitars that have this level of finish. I'm just letting you know that I do see some scratches going across the top of the frets. The fingerboard itself where the frets are applied to is a high gloss. Hopefully the camera will pick up. It actually has some really pretty grain.
all in all, the fit and finish on the guitar and the way it's assembled and the way it was glued up and manufactured as far as the tolerances, this is a nice guitar. All right, I have now tuned the instrument and I have tuned it to standard 440. And now that the guitar is in tune and has the proper tension on the neck, if you're going to 440, it's pretty standard, so I've tuned it to 440. We're going to take our gauge. This is a Tele, so I'm assuming it's 25.5. We're going to put our gauge on the guitar. Pick the guitar up here. And the neck is almost perfectly straight. There is just a fraction of light coming through right where my pointer finger is. I'm going to say that's less than 0.2 millimeters of a leaf. Now we're going to take our Stumac action gauge. I'm also going to check the action at the 12th. And I see the black line under 0 0.070 at the 12th on the low E. On the high E, The line is exactly on the black line at 0.060 on the high E. Now everyone's favorite part. I'm going to go into squirrel mode and we're going to go through and we're going to check all the frets on the guitar. I will go out of squirrel mode if I find a bad fret. And right there. It is I don't know. Now that I've moved the rocker, nope, I'm going to call that good. Even though I was going to say it had a rock, now that I'm holding the gauge perfectly square, it's good. Now we do have a spot right here. It is just barely rocking, but it is rocking. And it's good there. And right there. Again, it's just barely rocking, but it is rocking. And again, right there. So two spots on this fret. And again, right there. And like I said, I'm being super critical. It is a very small spot right here. As soon as I 
shift the fret rocker just a little bit, it goes away. But there is a spot there. Okay, we have one small spot here. We do have two spots on this one fret here and one spot up there. So four spots total, three frets. Again, none of those spots were really bad, uh, especially this one down here. It's pretty much non-existent, but it does rock if you hold it just a certain way, it will rock there. The, the one here, this was the one that had more rock out of all of them. Let me see if I can find that spot again. They're right there. And again, it, it's not much, but it is there. Okay. Let's move on and check the radius of the neck. Okay, I've picked out a couple gauges. I picked out a 9.5 to start with. We're gonna try that one. And it is definitely not a 9.5. I was thinking since it was a such a traditionally cut body that it may have a more traditional radius neck. So I'm going to toss the 10 as well. Here we have a 12. Let's check a 12. And I do see a crack in the center. It is touching on either side. Let's check our top. There's a little bit of a crack there. I'm going to leave the, the 12 up there. Let's try to find the 14. Okay, here's our 14. It still looks like there's a crack in the center. Just a little bit. It is touching on either side. Let's check it all the way up at the top. It's pretty close. Here's our 15. And the 15 looks really good. I'm going to put the 15 back on and let you take a look at it. There's our 15.
And it's not going to stand up down here because of the action height. But I'm going to call it a 15 inch radius. It does not seem to be compound. It does seem to be the same top and bottom. So now let's loosen our E string and our A string. Let's get some measurements on the neck. Okay, we're going to start out just getting some widths. Try that one more time, it slipped on me. Looks like we have 42.5 at the nut. At our 12th, Looks like we have 53.5. And then at our very last fret, 24th. Looks like 57.5. So let's get some thicknesses and I'm going to measure from the top of the fretboard to the bottom of the neck. At the first. And it is spot on 23 millimeters. Now let's check it from the top of the fret. Looks like we have 24.5 at our 12th. Looks like it's coming in just a fraction over 24 so we're going to say like 24.25 millimeters it's kind of right right past the line and that's reading 25.5 Now granted, you're working with an arc, so as you hold these calibers on, when you start getting into .25, that can very easily change just by the way you hold the caliber. These are very close measurements, but it's very easy to keep in mind if I'm not holding that perfectly square to the tangent of the radius, that can throw the measurement off just a little bit. But those measurements are pretty close. All right, I think our next thing we need to do is to plug this guitar into the tuner and let's check the intonation, our first fretted note. And now that I've loosened the strings, I can actually get a good feel on what the tuners feel like. I did tune the instrument earlier, but you're just barely tuning it. The guitar was sent to me probably just a half step out of tune. So now I'll actually get a good feel for at least the first three tuners and I'll let you know what I find. All right, I now have my Robertson strobe tuner hooked up to the guitar. We are going to check the intonation and our first fretted note. 
We are in our bridge pickup. Volume and tone is all the way up. So let's check our low E. Low E on the 12th. Open. Let's tune that just a little bit. There we go. 12th. Open. So our low E intonation is a bit sharp. Open. First fretted note. And again, it's sharp as well. It's sticking on the F sharp most of the time. There's our A, A on the 12th. It is sharp, open, 12th. Yes, it is definitely sharp, open, first fretted note. That one is actually pretty good. Our A sharp is pretty stable. There's our D. D on the 12th. Open. 12th. And it is sharp. Open, and D's first fretted note. The D sharp is sharp, but it is staying on the D. Well, here goes to the E. It is staying on the D sharp, but it is sharp. There's our G. G on the 12th. It's a fraction high. That's the closest one so far. Open. First fretted note. Yeah, it's kind of all over the place. It is definitely sharp. It's going up to the A occasionally. There's our B. There's B on the 12th. Open. B on the 12th. It's just a fraction sharp. Open. First fretted note. And our C is just a fraction sharp. So our B string isn't that bad. There's our high E. High E 12th. Open. 12th, and that's where I actually like to see it, just a little bit on the flat side. You can see that the, the open is dropping off just a little bit, but our 12th is dropping off a little, little faster than the open. So that's where I actually like to set the intonation. That The high E is good. Now let's check our First fretted note. And our F is just a fraction flat. Open. 
It's actually really good. So there are some issues here. The intonation from the factory, really for the first four strings, is sharp. And we know that we need to do some work on the nut as our first fretted note is sharp in a couple spots. What you can do is you can go through, some people actually set their intonation this way. They're going to go through their open E. Here's your F. And they go through and they do a, a balance. And they're checking each note. And what they're going to do is they're going to try to find a balance between the 12th low E and the open low E. And wherever they get the closest reading per fret, that's where they're going to set it. There are pros and cons to each way, but for video demonstration purposes, I always just go to the 12th. It would take 10 times longer to go through each fret and determine if you should be sharp or flat here on an average across all these frets. But this guitar from the factory has definitely been set on the sharp side. Okay, I now have our multimeter plugged into the guitar. And I have the volume all the way up, the tone all the way up, and we are in the bridge position. And we are reading 7, 0.09 in the center position we're reading 3.317 and in the upper position our neck pickup we are reading 6.06 all right I now have the scale on the bench we're going to set the guitar on the scale and check the weight. We're on grams. So in grams, we have 3,350 grams. And in pounds, we have 7 pounds, 6.1 ounces. Okay, next we're going to check out the electronics on the guitar. To do that, I feel that we're going to have to take the strings off the guitar. And I've never had good luck reinstalling strings. They always fail and break. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the strings off the guitar. And then we will open up the electronics cavities and see what we have. And for reference, the ball ends on these strings are all the brass color. So if the other strings from Firefly are D'Addario with the multiple color, they're not doing the exact same string on this guitar as I've seen on some of the other Fireflies. These all do have the brass ends on them. Okay, I've repositioned my second camera to get a better view on the electronics as we work on the guitar. So let's take the electronics plate off and see what's inside. We do have full-size pots. And here's our cap. I'm looking at these puddles. This one looks good. This one looks good. This one looks good. This one's kind of messy. The joints here look good. 
and we're very familiar with this switch. We've seen that particular switch on several of the sub $300 guitars. We do have some cloth wire here and here, and the black is also cloth here. The rest is the plastic nylon wiring. But all the solder joints look really good, except for this one. This one's pretty sloppy. Okay, under our pick guard, we have our other pickup. And there's our route. And while we have this off, we can sit here and we can look at the, the rest of the seam here. And this actually looks really good. And the route looks good as well. But if you were thinking about ever modifying this guitar and putting a, a P90 or a humbucker up here, you will have to do some routing. It is only routed for a single coil pickup. We do have cloth wire going to that pickup. Kind of hard to get in there to see that. I'm trying to shift this to where I can look under the pickup. Everything looks good. They do have the springs oriented to where the small, it's a cone spring, and the spring is on the larger, the larger side of the spring is facing the pick guard. So that is correct. That helps the pickup stay square to the guard. Everything looks good. Now before you put this back down, each time you do that, a little bit of the residue gets on the guitar. So we just want to make sure we eliminate that. And we're going to pull this so we take the slack out of the wire. And it is a very good fit. Now feeling that right there. Yeah, there's playroom. At first I thought the pickup was hitting the route. But as you can see, we can move this back and forth. So I think we're good there. I'm double checking it. That feels good. We have some residue here. <laughs> okay, we're going to take this one off and double check underneath that one. we can see our solder joints here. This one I can get up to where the camera will see it. These two joints look nice. And again, we have the cloth wire. And you can see here what I was talking about earlier, how they have the wider side of the spring towards the plate. So if you have a guitar and the pickups aren't returning to square properly, open it up. They may have the spring on backwards. But this looks nice. 
our route looks good as well. Now right here, there is some damage to the body. I don't know if you all can see that. Right there. It's no big deal. The plate is hiding it. But the route itself looks good. Okay, I guess the only other thing we really need to do is to open up and check the jack. And I need to get a different screwdriver. Okay, I'm back with a different screwdriver. So let's open that up. All right, let's take a look at what we have here. And again, with the white nylon jack, we have seen that jack many, many, many times. And the solder joints here look good. Now, as you can see right here, they have not run the wire through the hole for bonding purposes. You can see the holes open on both sides. So they've literally just laid the wire on top and bonded it. I would like to see the wire come through and solder on both sides. So that's, that's not as good as I would hope. I think this is one of the first fireflies I've seen where they didn't run the wire through the hole and the solder didn't get on both sides. But the joints here do have a decent sheen to them. So it was to temperature. All right. I'm going to reassemble the guitar and then we're going to put some strings back on it. Now here's a mistake a lot of people make. I have the screws just started. I'm going to make sure everything aligns as I tighten it. The bugle screws will shift the plates back and forth. So we're checking to make sure that we keep our offsets correct as we reattach everything. Okay, let's get some strings back on the guitar.
All right, I'm going to get the guitar in tune, stretch the strings a little bit, and we'll move on to the demo. I now have my guitar plugged into my rack mount preamp system. I've got the volume all the way up. We are in the bridge position, and I've turned the tone down just a little bit. This is all the way up. We're turning it down just a little bit. center position. position. center position. back to our bridge position. I still have the tone turned back just a little bit. This time I'm going to turn the volume back just a fraction just to take the edge off. And we're going to play some fretted notes and open notes all at the same time checking the intonation. <laughs> center position. Next. 
position. plugged into my applied research technology rack mount preamp it is running into a pro valve 6l6 power amp into four greenback celestian drivers this is for the people that made comments in the last video that they missed the 80s section so let's do some 80s riffs we're going to start out in the bridge position volumes all the way up tones all the way up Thank 
Okay, that's going to conclude our demo section. This is where we get into our conclusion of the review of this guitar. My final thoughts. I would have never purchased this guitar. You, the subscribers, kept saying you wanted to see it, wanted to see it. I ordered one, and i tell you what, I'm, I'm kind of glad I did. This guitar is very surprising. Not only is it just a sharp-looking guitar, but it has a sound that just makes you want to play. It's, uh, I really can't describe it. I found a channel on my ART that just makes the guitar sing. Uh, I really had fun playing this guitar. It plays well. I don't think we went over it in the demo section. The tuning keys on this guitar, I did replace the strings on it. The tuning keys are okay. Um, I don't think they're as smooth as the Firefly locking tuning keys. This is the same tuning key that they've been using on some of their other guitars. They're not horrible. They're just not super smooth. They do seem to work well getting fine tuning, you know, on the E string, because you don't have any fine tuners down here. But they work okay. It's not something that I would replace right now. To be honest with you, I really don't think I would replace anything on this guitar. It, uh... It plays well. It sounds good. It, it really doesn't need anything. If you wanted to get super picky, you could get in here and fine tune the nut and set the intonation on it a little better. But I'll be honest with you, the first fretted note, this guitar is as good as some thousand dollar guitars that I've checked. It's hit and miss on that first fretted note. Um, it's a nice guitar. If you bought one of these guitars and you had a completely different experience with it, leave a comment down below. This channel's about information for other people. If you bought one and it was horrible, or you had a bad experience with guitar gardens, leave a comment down below. That helps other people decide whether or not they want to purchase this guitar. But if you bought one and you love it, and it is a sharp looking guitar, and the fit and finish on it is as good as this one, the binding and all the work on this guitar is just done, it's done very well. Unbelievably well for a $200 guitar. It, it is shockingly good for $200. Leave a comment down below. Let's hear about your Mad Cat that you got from Guitar Gardens. And if you would, please hit the like button. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. When I see the subscriber count go up, it makes me feel good. It makes me know that I'm doing the content that you guys want to see. Anyway, thank you for clicking on the video.